So this is the, uh, the system itself. Uh, I'm not going into too much detail. Um, the key part of it is the uh, field station unit, and of course, uh, all engineers have acronyms, so we have <coughs> uh, an FSU. Um, it's also <coughs> uh, the LYB, the video box. And basically, this is uh, where the data is stored, so it's uh, basically a Linux computer. It's got a CPU in there, it's running Linux, it's got memory, it's got a radio in there. Um, then we have the sensors, uh, and the, the first versions of uh, Firefly are using the, uh, the vector size, the um, multi-component uh, full-wave sensor. At the end of the year, we will have a, uh, an add-on which will allow you to use uh, conventional geophone strings. It's a, a, a VHF radio control system, so we have a, uh, an infrastructure distributed central architecture where you can expand the range of this VHF system as necessary. Um, it's got Pelton source uh, vibe and uh, dynamite source controllers uh, talking to it. And then basically we've also built all of the support, so the, the uh, infrastructure, so getting the data downloaded, batteries charged, etc., etc., in an efficient manner. This is a bit of a, a busy slide, uh, but it just illustrates some of the communication technologies that we're using. Um, we have the command and control center, we no longer call it the recorder because the data is actually recorded in the, uh, in the boxes in the field. The command and control center communicates with the boxes and with the uh, remote centrals. Uh, these are sort of what might be called repeaters. They extend the range of the radio signal. So if you have areas where perhaps mountainous areas or jungle, you can place these uh, remote centrals to ensure that you maintain your uh, VHF radio coverage. One of the key elements in the, uh, in the whole system is the portable navigation tool. I'll show you some examples of that later, some of what it can do. But basically, uh, this one happens to be a Trimble uh, GOXM device. Um, but again, one of the key things we've done with Firefly is try and make it as flexible as possible so that the next generation of handheld GPS devices, you can use it. You're not constrained to <coughs> using that. Similarly with the batteries, for example. We produce the batteries, but it's a case of we're not the experts in battery technology. So anything new comes along, perhaps out of the cell phone industry or something like that, we can incorporate it and make it available uh, for use in Firefly. So there's a Bluetooth link, uh, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute, between the uh, portable navigation tool and the field station unit. And then as the spread rolls on, the bit boxes get picked up, they go through what we call a staging trailer, uh, they're hooked up to an internet, uh, sorry, an ethernet, and the data is downloaded. That's just a little bit of the illustration of the types of uh, communications that are going on here. One of the uh, ways that we've managed to uh, reduce both the cycle time, in other words, one of the things we wanted to do was try and reduce the amount of time that it takes to acquire a seismic survey. And the way we've done that is to essentially go to a, what we call a stateless surveying mode. And what we do there is conventionally, You'd have a survey crew um, which would go out and mark the positions where you wanted shots and receivers, either wooden stakes or pin flags, little bits of fluorescent tape tied to trees and things like that. What we've done with, uh, with the Connect software is we've enabled, this, this is the sort of deployment tool, we've got the little handheld nav tool there, uh, there's a, a mounted on a pole and a digital compass. And some of the technologies that are going on here are when we come to deploy the sensor, this is a point sensor, um, the guys put it into the ground, they take the alignment pole, this black pole, stick it onto the top of the sensor, the digital compass gives them the uh, azimuth of one of the horizontal components. Don't forget we're working with multi-component data here, so we need to have, understand the azimuth of one of the, uh, the horizontal components. Um, we're using as a source of elevations, again, it's flexible. The first few surveys that have been done with Firefly have used LiDAR, which is a, a laser-based, um, I guess it almost gives you an aerial photograph, um, about 15, <coughs> 20 centimeter vertical accuracy. And we build up a digital elevation model. And what happens is that when this guy's out in the field, he's got his work instructions in the nav tool, it tells us where to deploy the sensor, uh, the sense of the GPS in the, in the nav tool then gets the X and Y coordinates from the GPS. 
does a lookup to get the elevations, and basically that information is beamed by Bluetooth into the box. And that's also another time-saving device, because what we're doing here is putting the X, Y, and Z coordinates mm -hmm. of the sensor right into the box, and that's written into the segway <coughs> headers of the data. So that means that when you come to the processing center, you don't have the traditional um, land processing headache of basically two databases coming at you, one the seismic information, and the second the, uh, the survey information, and the poor guy's got to try and merge the two together and understand if they don't work at all. What we've got here is the same wide data that comes out of the field is fully populated with uh, receiver coordinates. And then the same thing happens in this case as a dynamite shoot. Uh, when the shot goes off, the coordinates uh, for that particular shot are sent back over VHF radio to the uh, command and control center and then uh, by VHF radio back out to the Firefly system. So it has all of the information to know where it is and where the source locations were for that particular shot. Some of the other things we can use Connects for is uh, health, safety, environment management. Um, so we can, each one of the layout crews, shooting crews have got one of these tools and at the end of the day when we bring them back, we download the data. Um, we can see where they've been, what they've been up to, uh, which gives us some useful production statistics. But it also allows us to define things like exclusion zones, hazard areas, where crews are not allowed to go into, and they will see that on their nav tool as they're going about their normal business. They will be told where they're uh, not allowed to go. We can log that uh, by layout crew you know, at the end of the day, produce a report so if there's any incidents occur, we can find out exactly uh, what has gone on. So this is basically the, the, what Connex is doing. It's, it's adding this extra layer of functionality and command and control around just uh, a straightforward hardware offering. It's allowing us to do the integrated uh, stateless survey, so we get some time improvements in the overall uh, duration of the survey. We're, we're cutting that element out a bit. Um, it also means that we don't have as much um, uh, trash in the field. We don't have survey stakes, pin flags, and so on. Um, it's allowing us to uh, operate much more safely. We can advise crews of areas where they're not supposed to go. We can track that. We can monitor it. Um, it's also allowing us uh, what we call data integrity. So all of the source and receiver locations are in there, in the headers, right from the word go. There's no need for any uh, merge later on in the, uh, in the processing center. Uh, productivity, we, we developed a uh, source-driven shooting queue. Uh, again, all under the command and control of Connex. Uh, so it, gone are the days of, um, I don't know if anybody's, you've ever seen dynamite operations, the shooter comes up, he connects up to the leads, and he'll get on the radio to say to the observer, okay, it's Fred here. I'm on line 101, it's station 300, and I'm ready to shoot. The observer comes back on the radio, hang on a minute, I'm just waiting for Joe, he's work, walking his way up there. So there's a lot of verbal communication going on. We've done away with all of that now, and so basically what happens is that the, uh, uh, the shooters, they hook up on the particular survey I'm going to show you um, in a minute, which was the geokinetics crew operating in Colorado, they had eight shooters. So they go up, they hook the leads up, they hold their thumbs down on the charge buttons. There's a digital signal sent back um, over the VHF radio to the command and control center. And there's a user-defined queue of a certain number. It might be four, six, eight, or whatever. When they're all ready to fire, the system just fires them all automatically. So bang, 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 one after the other. And then they, they move on to the next location. So we're getting the productivity there. We're uh, eliminating HS3 risks of people misunderstanding things over the radio, and it's all being done, dig done digitally uh, in a much more uh, sophisticated manner. 